The idiots have been in charge way too long. And that's why you're here. For the podcast you need. All for liberty all the time. Welcome to Liberty Bites Back. With your host, Brandon Immel. Now, I don't know if many of you have heard this, but Nancy Pelosi's home was descended upon by protesters. And they dubbed her tree the Freedom Tree and hung hair curlers and blow dryers on it. Furious over her hypocrisy during these COVID-19 tyrannical times. The rules for thee, but not for thee, elitists, are now showing themselves. Truly. Video is really showing Nancy Pelosi maskless like those she calls morons. And she was also in a business that the government won't allow to open indoors. All of that does show the hypocrisy of Nancy Pelosi. And it's sad instead of leaving it there, many are instead pushing masks with the story. At that point, I lose interest in any mask pusher who always lacks a PhD. Well, they always say, I'm no doctor. Well, then let Ron Paul speak in your place so he can tell you the real issues. Stating that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about a great article written by Stephen C. Miller. Go ahead and pull that up for you. Read it to you. Uh, the title is, Lockdowns and Mask Mandates Do Not Lead to Reduce COVID Transmission Rates or Deaths, New Study Suggests. A new National Bureau of Economic Research working paper by Andrew Ekinson, Karen Kapaki, and Tao Zha focused on countries and U.S. states with more than 1,000 COVID deaths as of late of July in all the study included 25 U.S. states and 23 countries. Based on their analysis, the authors presented four stylized facts about COVID-19, which are, once a region reaches 25 total COVID deaths within a month, the growth rate in deaths per day falls to approximately zero. In other words, no matter the country or state and its policies, Deaths per day stop increasing within 20 to 30 days of passing a threshold of 25 deaths. Number two, once that happens, deaths per day either begin to fall or the trend remains flat. And then number three, the variability in death trends across regions have fallen sharply since the beginning of the epidemic and remains low. All states studied, all studies, all countries studied have become more similar in their trends and have remained so. And then number four, observations. One to three suggest that the effective reproduction number, R, has hovered around one worldwide after the first 30 days of the epidemic. The paper's conclusion is that the data trends observed above likely indicate that the non-pharmaceutical interventions, such as lockdowns, closures, and travel restrictions, stay-home orders, event bans, quarantines, curfews, and mask mandates, do not seem to affect virus transmission rates overall. Why? Because those policies have varied in their timing and implementation across countries and states, but the trends and outcomes they don't vary. From the study's offers, location and sampling uncertain, the black solid line in both charts represent the median posture estimate. The solid magenta line in the top chart represents median growth rate of the seven day smoothed daily deaths for all 50 locations and corresponds only to the left scale. The two dashed bands in the both charts contain two-thirds of the prosperity probability at each time, each point in time, and two dashed bands, 0.9 of the prosperity probability, the growth rates of the death is approximately estimated according to the fitted Webull function. Effective reproduction numbers and normalized transmission rates are based on the SIR model 
and day zero is the earliest date in which the cumulative death toll reached 25 in each location. Now, this study does run a counter to the previous studies claiming that MPIs are effective in reducing transmission rates during the early stages of the pandemics. But one of the key candidates for the key's omitted variable, the true cause of the decline in the transmission rates after the first month in, ep in the epidemic is that the human interaction does not conform to simple epi epidemiological models. In the real world, human social networks overlap in such a way that a virus can spread rapidly for a short period of time as some people contact more networks than others, but reaches natural dead ends and roundabouts where potential new hosts and new social networks have already been exposed through other networks. The effect can resemble what some think of as a herd immunity, but relatively low infection rates. The authors reason that if NPIs are effective early on, they do not appear to be any more. You heard that. These MPIs that they are talking about, that would be the non-pharmaceutical interventions, which are lockdowns, closures, travel restrictions, stay-home orders, event bans, quarantines, curfews, and mask mandates. This study showed that they, if they were effective early on, they certainly are not now. So why don't we open up? Why don't we stop this mask bullcrap? And just move on from our lives. Go back into normalcy.